go. <laughs> Welcome to Two Crows Podcast, Frightening Frowen. We have Tyler and Lee. Hello. And, and our guests, <laughs> introduce yourselves. Brianna and Robin. And we... I asked Brianna and Robin to be here because they are awesome human beings that do something that I wish uh, was happening in my own life. <laughs> <laughs> they are co-parents that um, that do it in an amazing way that I've been watching for a few years now. And I wanted to bring them on to talk about how women can be amazing with each other and not feel the need to just hate each other because they are dating or married to the other person's ex. So, mm -hmm. um, and like I said before we started recording, Lee knew absolutely nothing coming in here. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I thought it was gonna be like a ghost story or something. I really had no idea. <laughs> and then I was like. Oh, I mean, if okay. we talked about the beginning, it kind of wasn't it could a be story. A story yeah, right? <laughs> right. So, how did um? Well, first of all, the first question that I believe that we should always ask guests are: What are your favorite dinosaurs? I, I knew this question was coming too because I listened to like the first episode. Yep. Um, <laughs> I'm not educated in dinosaurs, but I, I really enjoy my four-year-old's impression of a pterodactyl. Perfect. Yeah. So that's super fun. I don't know. I always think of long necks don't play with three horns or whatever that is. That's what I think of. I don't know. Uh, I love Land Before Time. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> that's a uh, classic. Yes. There's no wrong answers to that question unless you say something that's very far off from being a dinosaur. <laughs> oh uh, but yeah if you guys want to start with like your story and how it started and how you decided that you wanted to have a good relationship and um just kind of from the beginning of what happened I would love to hear I guess the beginning is me being married to Justin in, in like the first thing um I guess Justin and I met when I was like 17 and then we were married at 19 um, first year of our marriage was deployed to Iraq so then when we came back was kind of like the downfall of everything um, we were back for like a month and I got pregnant with our shared daughter Lydia and um, then he started school and it was a very big thing of we wanted very different things out of life and um I don't think that either of us knew that we wanted such different things when we got married, you know, and then it was, you know, different interests. And I was struggling with a lot of things mentally and it put a big damper on our marriage. And um, I'll be the first to even say that I probably didn't treat him very well. And so then there was just a downfall. And then he met Robin and then we were divorced and then it was terrible. It was terrible. <laughs> it was very and terrible. Yes. It's funny because so Justin's seven years older than me. So I was 18 and he was like 25 in college. Mm -hmm. So like I became a stepmom at 18, which is crazy. Wow. <laughs> um, but I mean, it's been fine now. But at the beginning, when they first got divorced, um, we did a lot of week on week off. Um, so like Lydia was with Brianna for a week and then she was with us for a week and it was horrible it was the yeah. worst choice we trying ever made. to find a good balance of because I went from like working 30 hours a week to having to work like 40 hours a week and full-time and then you have a child in school and then we're trying to talk to each other and get things down and it, it was terrible it was I yeah I didn't like that and like it was affecting Lydia, like she was sick all the time, mm -hmm. like physically yeah. sick. But Brianna's upset because she didn't have Lydia. But then Justin was upset on on Brianna's weeks because he didn't have Lydia. And like you don't know what's happening half of your kid's life then because you don't see mm -hmm. them. There was just such a disconnect. And I remember the pivotal point, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like it was a very very specific night. And um, 
Brianna hated me. Like, well, I was to like, she, <laughs> she will not have my child in her car. She will not bring her to my house. She will not know where I live. She will not know any of this stuff because you guys were dating before we were even divorced. So I was like, nope, don't like her. I want nothing to do with her. I don't want her raising my child. I didn't want any of this stuff. And it was, yeah, it was, it was bad. I was bad. It was, I was terrible. It's okay. We were all, yeah. we were all bad. <laughs> nothing was good at that point. Um, but I remember I walked into her apartment cause Justin had to work or something. And so Justin was like, Hey, Robin's dropping her off, but she'll just drop her off and leave. And like, you don't have to talk or anything. And, and the, Lydia came in and she was just this little, like, she's just such a spicy kid. And she's like, mom, Robin and I did this mom, Robin and I did this. And I was like, oh, <laughs> she's going to yell at me. And <laughs> And um, somehow Brianna said something about Justin being a horrible communicator. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, no, 110%. I think he's I said, a- he's terrible and you can keep him. And you're like, I plan to. And I'm like, Wah! on my insides. Like, <laughs> but I was like, if you don't want to talk to him, don't talk to him. I was like, here's my phone number. Text me. Like, Justin doesn't know what's happening 95% of the time anyways. Like, and t- almost 10 years later it's still the it's truth the same like mm-hmm. I'm just the keeper of the schedules I know where the children are I know like Brianna has shared children with her new husband I know their schedule like mm-hmm. I just know where the kids need to be most of the time and like that was the pivotal point when I was like you hate Justin mm-hmm. Justin doesn't love talking to you sometimes because you guys are so toxic with each other mm-hmm. that like maybe we can just communicate and that will make our life easier. And ever since we made that shift, I really feel like yes, it's I, so different. I do let our child in her car and she drives her places <laughs> now. No. All the time. <laughs> We're just taxis now. Well, it was. Oh, so yeah. Because <laughs> Robin essentially did all of the transportation. Mm-hmm. She picked her up from school. She made sure she did her homework. She did all of the stuff because both Justin and I were working. She took on that role. So, yeah. Oh. So I spent a lot of time with Lydia. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I still do, but like in the early years. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. And like then we, so Brianna's miserable because we're week on, week off. Justin's miserable because we're week on, week off. It's not working for Lydia. So I was just like, is there a different schedule that we could do? And this is like Brianna and I are the communicators now. Mm-hmm. So I was like, we can figure it out. It can change. Like I'm not married to this idea. Or, like, we don't have to set a schedule, and that's what it is all the time. Like, I'm flexible, you're flexible, and then we changed the schedule, and things got so much easier. Well, and we went through, like, um, I had seen a, and this was, like, really early on, like, maybe a couple months after our actual divorce. um, I had seen a, uh, I don't know, what are those, where people write things online? Oh, like a journal entry? Like a journal thing or whatever. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and uh, it was about a woman who was divorced and how they decided to throw their custody agreement, like, out the door, like, not follow it. And so I had sent it to Justin, and I said, "What do you read this, and what do you think about this? Um, because it talked about, like, child support and how you're always counting, and that adds to a bad relationship. And um, Which was a thing, like, Justin and I were both in college yep. when they got divorced. Yep. And, like, both part-time jobs, like, Mm -hmm. we didn't have any money. And here we're, like, cutting Brianna a check every month. Well, and I specifically remember him coming to my apartment and handing me a check and going, if I give you this money right now, Brianna, I can't pay my bills. And so it was more of, like, a, okay. So we talked about it, and we came to the agreement that we don't follow that custody agreement. Why is a judge telling us how to raise our mutual child your judge was very interesting though he was he was good um so we uh we decided to do our own thing we don't collect money from each other um we make our own schedule so the week on week off didn't work for us so now it's like (laughs) it's so weird now it's like every other day it's like yeah you just kind of make a schedule of what works and like share calendars and things like that yep i'm like really our weekends are every other probably kind of we're always asking each other whose weekends is who yeah it's like is this actually our weekend I'm not sure like we try to line it up mostly with Brianna's other kids when they're Mm -hmm. here Lydia's here type of thing um but like 
if I have family Christmas, like, like this weekend Christmas, like, is technically my weekend, but they have something going on. So she gets to go, you know, and that's how it should be my, so growing up, my parents were divorced when I was five and they were such sticklers with exactly what the document said that it really was a detriment to us. I remember one time um, because the court said this day is their day and they were insistent that it would be at midnight. Like they would bring us to drop us off at midnight because that was my time now. And it just was horrible for us as children. And I never wanted that for my kids and just the fighting and the talking about each other in front of the kids. Mm -hmm. And I've never once talked negatively about my ex-husband in front of my kids. I've said I've said things. But not in front of them. <laughs> We've also, them. We have, yeah. <laughs> Today, even, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. I see your face now, so it's different. It is it very different. <laughs> <laughs> that was another thing, though, that we shifted. Is it's not Brianna's time or Justin's time. Yeah. It's Lydia's time, yep. and mm-hmm. where Lydia feels like she needs to be, because Lydia's always been such like a daddy's girl. Yes. Even like, I think it was a problem for me to be around at the very beginning because she just wanted Justin to herself all the time. Mm-hmm. And like, she really didn't care about Brianna that much. A lot of the time she was like, but I want my dad. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> like, when we made that mental shift though, to it being Lydia's time and being where she needed to, to be like, there was times I would text Brianna and be like, I don't know that she's going to want to go home tonight because yep. she's just like snuggling on the couch watching disney movies type of thing and brianna be like okay so can you drop her off in the morning yeah absolutely no problem that's i'll be really or whatever it's really cool you guys can put your basically your egos aside to be able to do what's right you know for her and then that way it's kind of just better for everybody i my son is an adult now and it was, I tried to do that. Like I, I, my son wanted us to be like one big family and I tried to do that for him, but there was so much competition from the other side. Like I couldn't even tell them like what kind of gifts I was going to get him for his birthday. Cause they would make sure they got it and then not let me see him until he'd gotten it from them first. And it was just, it was awful, you know? And, um, and I just tried to do my best from my side, like not talk trash about them and help him navigate stuff. And, you know, but it was just, you know, just shredded my insides for 18 years, basically. And it's really cool that you guys basically got through that stage of the shredding and now get to do something better, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I know Lee's son now sees it too, as an adult, like what happened and how it was different seeing it from his view as a child looking at it and who was saying bad things and how you see the other person to who wasn't saying bad things now as a chat as an adult and how maybe the perspective was a little bit different and yeah yeah I I mean like you're you're kind of a family again now yeah Yeah. I basically was vindicated I just had to go through a lot of pain to get there but I I hate that my son went through that I even though like he understands now I hate it like it should never have been that way for him you know definitely We do a lot of things now too that people think that it's so fake all the time, which is so funny to me Uh (laughs) because like I would have to put in so much energy to be fake. Like I don't have that kind of time in my life, No, but like we get that so much. (laughs) Uh (laughs) It's almost October. So like Lydia loves, loves Halloween. Mm -hmm. So we'll all carve pumpkins together. So I'm talking like Brianna, her husband, me, Justin, Lydia then my two kids and Brianna's other four kids Mm -hmm. like we have just hordes of children together all the time yeah it's the best (laughs) but like we'll do pumpkins together and then we'll do trick-or-treating together and Christmas time we do together Christmas morning is always done at Mm -hmm. our house with everybody so yeah well it's it come to a point you know like even before Justin and I were divorced of I don't want to miss out on that Mm-hmm. Well, you should yeah. have to miss out on it. Let's just do it together so that you don't have to miss, or, you know, because I don't want to miss it either. We fought about Christmas morning all the time because I want to be there and he wants to be there. So we just do it together. And like now it's different too, because in the 
in the first little bit, it was just Lydia. Like it was just Brianna and it was just me and Justin and Lydia. But now like we've since added so many other kids that like my boys want to be with Lydia on Christmas morning and they should have that right to be with their sister. Same with Brianna's kids. Like, and they all love each other. Like my boys love Brianna's other kids. (laughs) Like it's just so fun. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I like that you don't, like, I've noticed this on Facebook, at least, that you don't distinguish them just as, like, stepkids or, like, put a title to it, which my um, step-siblings, we were very much like that, too. We were siblings, and we had been since we were little, but I like that, and I hate when people call them, like, stepkids or half-siblings or anything like that. A negative connotation added around it. She's my step Mom. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like we could say bonus mom. Yeah, we say bonus. Yeah. I like but that like, term better. Yeah. Walking into like <laughs> kindergarten and Lydia goes, These are my moms. I and have two like, moms. And we're, we're like, we're not, not like together. That. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but no. Yeah. I and love that. Because she's a preteen and she thinks it's really funny. funny. These are my two moms. These are my two moms. And goes to a Catholic school. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like Lydia (laughs) but now I don't think that we try to like talk her out of it we're just like yep they'll Mm -hmm. eventually find out how but (laughs) I mean we live in a small enough community that they already know (laughs) (laughs) oh this town (laughs) agreed yeah uh Lee's way over there in California in a a bubble (laughs) Not in our yeah. little small town world. <laughs> I'm in a magical glittery bubble. <laughs> yeah, you're by the like most expensive area in California too. Most expensive, most diverse, most tolerant, most like, yeah. And also most homeless. Yeah. So, yeah. It's it's so expensive. I almost moved there and my rent was gonna go up six thousand a month to move there. No way. Not a chance. San Francisco <laughs> yeah. is insane. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm only here because my doctors are here and is Stan at Stanford and you know like my son is here and it's but he wants to leave too so at some point we will just migrate here. together and yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll just a, we'll move into your baby. driveway. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, what did you say? I have a surrogate baby that lives in San Francisco. Oh, yeah. I forgot you did that. That's yeah. another amazing thing you did. Oh, <laughs> neat. <laughs> Oh gosh. Um, oh yeah. So I, one thing I did want to say is I do love my son's stepmom. I wish she loved me, but (laughs) (laughs) she doesn't know me though. Like all she knows of me is what my ex has said. And I think she's realizing now as, cause our son is 14, um, that a lot of the things that she had heard and same with my ex that a lot of the things he had heard were my son complaining because he wanted to get something out of it Mm -hmm. and uh lately so my son was supposed to go live with his dad for a year and I wanted him to do that because his dad's in the military and he's not gotten to see his dad very much I think in the last 10 years he's seen his dad about 10 weeks and I this is his last year that he is on shore duty that before our son is 18 and I really wanted him to go live with him for a year and things happened and he got sent home after four weeks and it's really hor- like tragic and I'm hoping that halfway through the school year he can go back down there for the other half but that takes two to want to do that <laughs> right absolutely and um I'm just really like I personally like lower child support and change like his, our custody agreement is technically that he has 30% custody um, of one of the kids and 10% of the other one. But I never really, I mean, he never followed it because he never actually saw him during those times. And so usually the times he can see him is the time that isn't a break. And so he's allowed to come up here anytime. um, Or if we can make it work for a certain amount of time for, Uh, my son to go down there but our other son is um, in like a residential home and has a lot of expenses which um, the child support barely covers any of that which is why like he agreed to that amount um, was like half of the expense of that son being there 
Um, so it's just automatically coming out of his check so that we can pay for that. And, um, it's just been, it's been freeing to not feel like I need that except for that this is a shared responsibility and like, we're both taken care of and it's easier for me to just pay it, but it's not really child support because it's going towards our fees for the county (laughs) for, um, for his care. But I wish that I had that relationship with, with his stepmom. I really do. And I tried. Yeah. Which sucks. Cause when you really put your heart into it and it's not received very well is discouraging for sure. And I think if we yeah. lived near each other, it would be easier for me to make that connection, but they live in Texas and we live in Minnesota. So it's the distance is a big thing. And she also English is her second language. And so there's a language barrier as well. Um, she's from the Philippines and she, from what I hear is an amazing cook and I'd love to try it sometime, (laughs) (laughs) but I'm glad even though we don't have a relationship, I'm glad my son has a good relationship with her and that they, that I feel safe with having him there and with her. And like, I don't have any bitter feelings towards her and I never did. Um, I just wish she didn't have them towards me. (laughs) And that is a. I remember like one of the first times Lydia and she was like three, four, and she goes, I want to buy Robin flowers because I love her. And it was the first time she'd ever said anything like that. And my first instinct that I would have done on the outside would have been like, she's not your mom. I'm your mom. <laughs> um, but I didn't. I said, okay, well, let's go get her flowers then. And you can tell her you love her. And I think I texted you and you were at home and we yeah. brought you flowers. And I have a picture and- of little Lydia outside of my apartment, like with her flowers. She's so freaking proud. Oh, like, my mom and I bought flowers for you and I honestly I'm sure even at that age Lydia was expecting me to be bitter and that's not your mom I'm your mom but I never tried to make her feel that way ever um because I grew up with my dad dating women and my mom feeling bad about it and so I was like I don't want to perpetuate that cycle I do not want my child to feel how I felt so and we like, did it it's like even branched out now like my parents love chatting with Brianna's mom like they love Mm -hmm. Brianna's mom so like it's branched out so much further than just us because I feel like I feel like your parents were even a little like standoffish a little bit yeah like Mm -hmm. they really questioned is this gonna work really you guys like like talking together and stuff like that that's gonna work for you everybody always thinks the sky is gonna fall that we're gonna (laughs) find like a oh my god they're in the same room yeah like (laughs) walk into the the cafeteria for like open house Mm -hmm. at Lydia's old school and everybody would like look at us and they'd be like you know Brianna's here right I was like yeah I know we have a kid (laughs) like we're going to open house like the rest of you or like you would fill out all the school stuff oh yeah like she would do all the paperwork for the school stuff and then people would like come to me and ask me questions I'm like I don't know Robin filled it out (laughs) I even still do it and they're like well did you have permission to do this what was the one there wasn't a I don't remember what it was there was something where she just got like grilled and I they had to like ask me and I'm like well she is her mom too she lives with her you know I don't know it's something it's that, like mental health I had to literally oh, sign what? something over saying that they could discuss it with Robin yeah. and I'm like, oh. like yeah of course it was when she started um, therapy therapy mm-hmm. yep yeah they like I was just brought justin and brianna into this little room and we're like you need to sign permission for robin to like bring her to to make an appointment yeah i was like i'm the scheduler you think brianna's gonna do that (laughs) no she's not (laughs) exactly she doesn't know where lydia's at half the time i didn't (laughs) safe (laughs) i was just thinking that um there's this sort of like cultural expectation of animosity and i wonder like how many people uh just follow through with that role without realizing that they don't have to like hate the other person you know they probably have more in common than they realize you know and um it's just until you switch your mentality to like you don't realize how much that hatred like weighs on you like Mm -hmm. it's so freeing to Mm -hmm. not be afraid to text Brianna or be like I don't know is she gonna yell at me today we'll find out like it's just I mean I got that out of the way this morning (laughs) (laughs) it was something totally silly but I was like I snapped at her she's mad about something and it's fine (laughs) I just said okay 
and then she texts me later sorry I didn't mean to snap at you I was like it's fine totally you were sorry. also not feeling well this morning either. No, <laughs> right. no. So we've been I've been stressed and Robin was trying to help and I'm like it's not helpful though <laughs> <laughs> But like once you change your your mindset yes. about things, it's so liberating. It is absolutely. Yeah. I, well, we've been in so many different situations. I think when you did Mary Kay, she had a Mary Kay oh, party yeah. and she invited me to it, and I was like, "Well, hell yeah, I'll I'll be there," you know. And we all had to stand up and introduce how we knew Robin <laughs> because she was the host. And so I stand up and I'm like, "Oh, she's married to my ex husband," and everybody did that. <gasps> like <this laughs> that's the everybody. worst thing. Literally, just like. <gasps> then they kept they would just look back and forth at us the entire time and I'm like it's really not that big of a deal like oh I didn't think it was a big of a deal but apparently everybody was like oh, an ex-wife and a wife in the same room oh my you know yeah yeah like we live our lives I, together, guys yeah what do you expect <laughs> for the time that we um we got invited to that party in Slayton and we had to drive 45 minutes and I was like you know what we got to ditch the kid and we got to go to the same party so why don't we just go together and we like toodle up to this party together and they're like you, well, it was your you, mother-in-law, my like mother-in-law. my ex-mother-in-law, her mother-in-law, and yeah. then we show up together, and everybody's like super uncomfortable with us, and we're like, "This is life." This, you invited us to the same yeah. party, yeah, right? Like, we came together. Why would we drive two yeah. cars? That's stupid. I I kind of went through that before I realized what was happening on the other the side that I couldn't see of my ex when when they were remarried and everything. Um, because I would go out like they were in a band together and I would go like photograph I photographed their wedding when they got married and you know in my mind I was like oh we're gonna like have this dynamic and it's gonna be good for you know and I didn't know that there was this bad stuff happening they were basically talking about me and you know um, and uh, it was interesting though going into these social situations like especially at the wedding people are like you're photographing how that's so weird and I was just like I don't want to be married to them. I like, you know, <laughs> I, I take good photos and I don't have to buy them a gift now. So there you right, go. Yeah. Like, you yeah. know. And it, you know, it was fun. And I got to see my son in a little suit. I, I didn't, I didn't want to miss out on getting to see that stuff too. So I got to be there for that. And, you know, even after things kind of like got bad, I would still put that priority forward and like go in go to like social events with them and stuff because I still wanted to have that experience with my son and just be like you know whatever but there were a few times I like walked in and the whole room just got quiet and it was because they had been like telling them things about me you know and then and then like they the people would start talking to me and realize I wasn't like the person they made me sound like a troll or something I have no idea (laughs) and then they would be like oh you're like really cool and I'm like okay <laughs> you know, like like someone tell you different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, uh, you probably shouldn't tell me and I'll be mad for a week. So. Right, right. <laughs> I feel like Brianna had the same situation though, because Justin and I got married not very long after they got divorced, to be honest. But um we were like talking about the dress that, that Lydia was gonna wear and and how she wanted to do her hair and whatever. And Brianna's like, well, like I don't want to miss that and we had already invited her to our wedding like she had an invite and everything and I feel like you were kind of teetering on the edge but you're like no I want to see Lydia yeah walk down the aisle as a flower girl type of thing and so Bran was at our wedding yeah it was literally no big deal for me it was awkward but you know it it was you really have to put yourself in that you know I am not married to him anymore that ship sailed we're better off friends than we ever were husband and wife like you know our we, our relationship started as friends I'd like to end the relationship as friends um but there is that little part in you of well I remember when I married him and how I felt when I married him and everything and to watch them get married I think it was also really like cathartic for me too of he's moved on I'm very happy for them. I'm glad that he did find somebody that was better suited for him than I was because I wasn't very good to him either, you know, but it was nice to see how much they loved Lydia and included Lydia in all that. And Lydia has always been number one for Mm -hmm. all of us. So it was nice to see that part, you know, but it was a little awkward because I'm sure it was awkward for you to get married like, in front of the ex-wife. Oh, I didn't but... even think about it because I was so nervous about saying my vows oh. correctly that I was like, 
like yeah. just, I don't know. <laughs> it's better when you mess up the vows, though. Yeah. <laughs> Your waffle wedded I husband. Up, I messed him up at our rehearsal, so that's why, like, literally before we got married, I was sitting on the floor with a puke bucket because I was like, I don't think I can do this. It's not that I don't want to marry him; it's that I don't think I can stand up in front of everybody. It's yeah. horrible. I will never get married again. That was awful. <laughs> The, the most awkward for me in that situation, like all of it was fine, except for their first dance, like was a song from our early relationship. And it was like, I was like, that was the only thing I just went, I feel really weird right now. And I'm not even exactly sure what it is that I'm feeling, you know, and that was it. Like, I didn't get mad or anything. I just was like, this is weird and awkward. And, but I realized that nobody else was Ha- no one else knew so it was just my experience yeah you that's know? weird of them <laughs> <laughs> I mean music is really <laughs> sentimental to me so like that's yeah. a really weird thing there right. were a, there were like a lot of like like my ex would have her wear like my old clothing and there were like there was a lot of weird stuff like that in the beginning and I actually talked with her and was like no you need to put your foot down and be like if you're going to be with me you need to be with me not like some idea where you're trying to recreate the relationship from before and helped her like be more assertive that was always like even after they had their own kids she would come to me and be like oh I'm really frustrated with this and I'd be like just put your foot down set mm-hmm. the boundaries it, we didn't know that the ex was a narcissist so like we were both trying to nav- navigate That's this hard. kind of crazy making you know oh so the ex was wanting to Sorry, that your ex's ex was trying to wear your clothes. Yeah, because my my ex was pushing her to do so. Oh, got it. Okay. Yeah. And at first she was she was younger than us and we were really I my son I was 21 when my son was born, so sh- she was like by that point she was like 19 or so, so she was really young and still like developing um her own self and I was just like just say no. And if they don't like it, you don't have to stay like go be with somebody that like you know that's why I left is because I felt invisible and so you know I didn't stay very long because I was just like nope and yeah I'm proud of you yeah yeah Yeah. (laughs) oh that was it's hard to leave even when it is uncomfortable or you know that it's toxic or abusive um it's still like really hard to leave and you end up staying the longest in really toxic situations because it gets harder and harder to leave and you're like well I've been through so much already with this person why not try a little bit especially with the kid right like because Mm -hmm. I was like what I did not I had a terrible experience as a kid having like multiple families and um I I literally when I found out I was pregnant I I wrote down I have a journal where I still have the notes where I was like these are the things that are priority one of them is that no matter what our family structure is like He always feels like he's part of a family, like he's not going to be like alienated or treated as other than. And my ex did exactly all the things that I asked them not to do. And so like when they had their own kids together, um, my son basically got treated as less than like all of a sudden this, you know, his stepmom was like ignoring him and only focusing on her kids and you know, um, even now as an adult, like the other kids are like 15 and 13 and they get like priority on whatever's going on. And my son is just like, has so much resentment. And I know what that feels like. Cause I went through that with, I was, I was an adopted stepchild. So, and I got treated accordingly and I just did not want that. So, you know, I, I have, I get so mad. So I'm like, you promised me, but you know, um, I did my best to build my own thing for him. So, and he said that that did help him a lot over, over the years. That's good. I mean, I'm glad he had you and I wish that he had his other parent to show the love and show the support um, in the way that your son needed. Even now as an adult, I feel like it could still be repaired, but I don't think they will. Um, knowing what I know about that person, but, Mm -hmm. um, but there's always hope. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Although I, you gotta wonder at some point, do you like, just 
decide to let that hope go because sometimes the hope hurts more than just accepting like reality and then you can be pleasantly surprised if a decade down the road like you know come back I've never had a good relationship with my stepmom and I know that I never will and I did have to get rid of that hope I had a little bit of hope after I turned 18 and she didn't feel like she was supporting me anymore and when I was 19 and had Liam um she I called her grandma like for the kids and she got really excited one day and then like a month later we've never talked since yeah and my dad and I get along really well but my stepmom and I just she doesn't acknowledge my kids as grandkids she doesn't acknowledge me or my brother as her children and it's been really sad but my dad does but I don't know how he put up with living like with a partner like that towards his kids like right right Right. that's one thing that always like gets me fired up is when people are like oh so like how many kids do you have and I'll say Lydia's 12 and Lucas four and Lynx is two and they're like oh there's a big age gap I'm like yeah Lydia's like my stepdaughter but but she's my kid whatever oh so you only really have two kids no that no no (laughs) I actually have three like I I dress three I feed three like I raised three children and Lydia's been there longer like it wasn't like you brought the other two in and Lydia was already older it was Lydia was there and watched the family grow and was there with the family while the family grew yeah the act of parenting is parenting period it doesn't matter like you know yeah yeah and even like when we had Luca so I remember being in the hospital and we had him at like nine at night and Lydia, we called her right away and Brianna like made sure that she knew that her brother was born and she wanted to come right then at like right then 10 there. p.m. <laughs> 10 p.m. And Brianna's like, no, we'll go right away in the morning. So she came at like seven in the morning mm-hmm. and then she's like, mom, can we go back at lunchtime? So she came back <laughs> at lunchtime and then she came back after school and then, I think it was after, and then she came back again. Well, and I mean, like, like imagine having a a newborn with your husband and then there's the ex-wife yes yeah, so over yeah. and over and over again <laughs> well, and, you know and it's hard too because i understand that those are intimate moments like that is an intimate moment between you and your husband i don't want to ruin it by being the you know but it happened when you had eden too That's you had true. eden yeah. at home and then Liddy was at our house and i was like okay we're gonna go meet eden she's like fresh <laughs> but you guys always <laughs> after I had a surrogate baby uh-huh. they always brought Lydia to the hospital too because she needed to see the ending to the story as well so I mean I think there was one time you weren't there and Justin hung out in the ho- or in the hospital room with me for 20-30 minutes after I had given birth and yeah well we they weren't was, married there was one surrogate baby where we didn't know if your mom was gonna make it in time yeah. I was like, just call me. Like, yep. we'll go to the hospital. And so I'm like figuring out plans for Lydia so that I can go with Brianna to have a baby. Yep. And people are like, that's so weird. <laughs> I was like, no, because if that's how I can support her and this relationship. Like, yeah, okay. That's, that's the best kind of weird. Right. Yeah, it's not taking it anything away from my life. It's just adding so much more. Like, I've met the dads to her surrogate babies and I've taken their family pictures and stuff in yep. the park and like, I got to be you a guys, part of things that I never would have been a part of right? in, like, other relationships. I you embraced love, basically, mm-hmm. to sound super cheesy. Like, yeah, you real, that's though. what you chose. Like, it's awesome. Definitely. There's always been I, a lot of that. We've always, our, we like the shock factor. Yeah. No, no, that's, <laughs> that's our favorite thing. <laughs> like, we literally sometimes put ourselves in those positions just for that shock factor of... <laughs> We're just changing the norm here. Yeah. <laughs> it's really what we're out for. Yep. I know this is a little different, but a couple of my really good friends I met from partners cheating on me with them. Oh. And putting that aside, like the feeling is very similar though. Yeah. And putting yeah. that aside and being like, well, it wasn't her. She didn't know. She had no idea. Right. And there must be something he saw in her. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, I email with the wife of of the man who made me the other woman like I told her what happened and then we stayed in contact and we talk about books and our kids and you know like yeah it's cool 
it it was yeah. healing for me because it was such a mm-hmm. traumatic experience to be lied to in that way and I know that it was for her too so to be able to like kind of find a human connection and that is I think really cool I agree and yeah it was really healing because we both had the same feelings we both had the same person that we could be upset about because they're mm-hmm. the one who made that decision and hurt both of us mm-hmm. and it was it was really healing I feel like having animosity towards that other woman whether it's after you're not together or you're cheated on with that person it really only hurts you and yeah anyone else involved in it but like it hurts you the most and you're holding on to those feelings and saying those words under your breath and and having those reactions like full body reactions to anything to do with that person and it's just not healthy and does not it's not good (laughs) so it's it's weird to blame somebody who didn't do anything like they Mm -hmm. just happen to be duped as well and you know it's like blame the person who did the bad exactly uh, eat Going back to that feeling of like I don't know I I'll frequently tell Brianna like things that Justin does that are super irritating she'll be like yeah I know I was married to him. <laughs> I know how he is <laughs> we, we were on that level all the time <laughs> my car that he did not get fixed but yeah. it's fine yeah. uh Brianna are you like the do you have a good relationship with your husband's ex um, we're working on it. Absolutely. Um, I'm trying to be the, they have a bad connection when it comes to communicating because they're the bad person in each story. And so like Tris trying to communicate something simple turns into a fight. Whereas I can communicate with her because ah, she's not the villain in my story and I'm yeah. not the villain in her stories. So we do, we have, um, that relationship has gone um a lot better now I think than it has so we're we're making progress on it I feel like it's different if you have three Mm -hmm. kids and we only had one to balance and like yours are older than what Lydia was at that point so yeah like Lydia didn't have any activities she went to preschool like Mm -hmm. that was the only thing you had to balance at the very beginning but you've got a fifth grader who were all over like you got basketball and baseball and after school sports and well and who's to picking be, him up and getting him wherever it's really funny because I have turned into the role you had with Lydia in the beginning now with my stepchildren mm-hmm. you know so I'm the one that gets them to their appointments and I'm the one that picks them up from school and I'm the one that does all this stuff where I didn't do that with my own child but I do that with my stepchildren mm-hmm. so it's kind of it's all come full circle for me mm-hmm. where I'm like wow did I ever do this to you as the biological mom? You know, you literally and, texted me. I have, I, did I do this? I have uh, apologized <laughs> for things because I'm like, it really, honestly, if I came off like this, that's not who I want to be. So I learned on the other side now. <laughs> it's all full circle. It did. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. I think that a bit, another big part of healing is seeing other people do the same things you did and realizing it too, because I definitely wasn't the best person and a lot of it had to do going through my divorce and a lot of it had to do with pain that I was going through it was a very abusive relationship and it continued to be abusive after we weren't together um and I was trying to find my voice but in trying to find my voice I became kind of mean <laughs> and not just yeah. assertive and yeah. um so that carried over into some other relationships too and I didn't really have the best examples in my life, obviously. (laughs) So I just had to kind of figure it out as I went and what felt good and didn't feel good. And being autistic on top of that, I am sure had another level of (laughs) trying to navigate my own brain and what's real and what isn't real (laughs) and what's a feeling and what's uh, cognitive behavioral therapy helped me a ton with figuring out what is rational and what is not but uh I definitely wasn't the best person all the time and then seeing that in an ex of someone I was dating and then realizing what I had done before too and treating people that way uh definitely was healing for me and I could I wasn't as angry at them because I understood why they were doing it and could relate to what they were doing and then kind of harness a better situation and better relationship through understanding and being able to communicate that to them. Didn't always work, but. 
all be perfect. <laughs> no. I'm far from perfect. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. You have to be willing to admit it, though. You do. You have to admit your faults and be like, yep, I really, I really screwed that one up. And, you know, be able to communicate. Communicate is like the biggest thing. Literally, it, people ask us all the time, how do you do it? Communicate. You just have to communicate mm-hmm. and over communicate. Yeah every well, relationship you yeah you have to be flexible you have to let them know you know hey I'm not feeling well can you have Lydia for another night or whatever because that that happens mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. or now we're navigating you know okay well I've got a sick kid in my home but I don't want your kids to get sick so what do you want to do about it should we come up with a plan you know even through COVID, COVID that was, was a big thing time. oh yeah and it was like I didn't want something that was in my house to go to Brianna's kids to go to her their mom's house. Yep. So it's like we are no longer just thinking about ourselves and our kids and our household, but we're thinking about all of these other households that are now connected to us. And like your kids went to daycare before my kids went to daycare. Right. So like there was also that added thing. So so much of it is, is just don't be selfish. Like right. Just think about the yeah. whole picture. Yep. Yeah. Do you live near each other? I used to live closer. Yeah. So we've lived like I was in town. You were in Ghent for a little bit. Yep. Um. So like ten miles, and then you were closer because you were in Lynn. 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 So we were like three yeah. miles apart. But right now we're like fifteen or 15, twenty. Yeah. So it's it's kind of funny because when Brianna had Eden, her youngest. You couldn't find daycare for Eden. Nope. Mm-mm. And I was staying home. So Luca's four. Eden's right in the middle. And I was pregnant with Lynx. Yep. And I was like, well, I'll just take her. Like, I grew up in an in-home daycare. I'm literally licensed under my mom to do daycare. Like, mm-hmm. I'll just take her. And you were going to get, like, something stupid, like a two-week maternity leave. Yeah. That's so, so ridiculous. Brand new itty-bitty baby. And I had Eden for... Six a couple months, of months for sure yeah. yeah six months until, six months so like you got too big and you're like i can't do this like, like, do like, it. fair enough i completely understand <laughs> yeah but then like this last summer just like a couple weeks ago mm-hmm. my daycare lady had a baby and was off for two weeks and i was like i don't know what i'm gonna do with my two boys Brandon's like drop them off like so we're <laughs> close enough that like we drove the 20 minutes out here dumped the kids off went to work and came back and got them and it's always so interesting because like ryan's kids brianna's kids are like asking when my kids are gonna come so like Mm -hmm. i have one upstairs just hanging out (laughs) well and then i was in a pickle with getting eden to daycare so my ex-husband had to drop eden off at daycare so then i have to text my daycare lady that my ex-husband is dropping off my child and it's just like a whole thing you know (laughs) but everybody rolls with it or like there was a day that Jacks needed to be picked up from school, school. Mm-hmm. and I was like I can't but Justin can <laughs> I'll just send Justin to go get him so he picks up my stepson <laughs> to bring to his mom at my house it was the whole thing but <laughs> most people just go with it we had fun yeah. we figured it out yes there is an adult <laughs> coming to get the child yes. <laughs> a safe adult a safe adult yes yeah. <laughs> yes I'm like I'm gonna sign my life away at daycare too so that like Brianna and Ryan can pick up my boys because mm-hmm. it just happens sometimes when it does absolutely when like the stars don't align or mm-hmm. we miss something because we do that I'm like actually there is something going on this day I forgot about because well, we have seven kids going in like seven different directions all the time so oh, as as yeah. just to have the support <laughs> is is absolutely. really awesome like I did all that because with my son it was just us and I don't have like family support or anything so um my ex did they they did have family support so when my son was with them they could be like oh you you know grandma can watch him or whatever but I always kind of like daydreamed about having like you know having that support and um just because I'd see how nice it was when other people had it but I think it's it's awesome it's it's like it makes me think of like um just how like culturally we be, we've become so like isolated from like each other, our families and all this stuff. And this is, you know, this thing that's happened like the last hundred years. And before that people tended to work more together, like families were more connected and neighborhoods were more, you know, connected, probably not everywhere, but 
just generally more so. And um, so there's a little bit more of a village effect, mm -hmm. you know, that whole it takes a village. And um, yeah, you guys should like teach people. <laughs> people say that all the time. Yeah, this is the closest we're getting. Yeah. Write a book. <laughs> 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 We always say it like it's really not that hard as long as you all want it. Yes. Like, if you're all willing to do it and to communicate and be in the group texts. I know Ryan hates the group texts sometimes, but I can see <laughs> Ryan hating the group texts. <laughs> uh-huh. Well, I, I don't know. He's just so we'll figure it out, you know. And it's like, no, sometimes you can't figure it out, but it's yeah. I'm also <laughs> known to like send out a whole calendar and be like, this day we have this and this day we have this and that's overwhelming sometimes, but I like to be able to look back and so like, do I. <laughs> I actually did tell you that. that and was, I right? think that we do it all the time. It's in the text. It's in the text. <laughs> <laughs> we need like a shared calendar, I feel like. Yeah. Now that we've got. Can you share it with that many people? Yeah. Google Calendar, you can do lots of stuff right with enough. it. <laughs> <laughs> I need yep. to do that too. Cause now having, cause my kids are now 16, 14, 11, and 10. There's so many calendars, so many things going on. And most of them can get to where they need to go after school. Cause it's usually like at the school or right next to it, but I want to know where they are. No, they're not murdered. So <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, and then, of course, like, I don't, they've all lost devices because they use them not the way they should be, not in, like, horrible things, but, like, too much. Yeah. So, like, screen time for me, I've definitely, they have to earn it, and they only get a certain amount. And they break things. I don't want a bunch of broken phones. So, <laughs> I have one I, phone that they share. <laughs> I'm really glad that I did the raising of a child before screens were commonplace. Like, you know, like he had to learn how to entertain himself with without that. And and he's a total nerd. He's like a big gamer. He plays D D, like, you know, and and enjoys this technology. But as a kid, like that just wasn't, you know, it wasn't there. And I'm really glad because as soon as you started seeing kids with, I was like, oh, I would be the parent that would be like, nope. <laughs> That's us. Yeah. She yeah. has a phone. But we control everything and it's great. But we and we we have differences on stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Like in my home, I take her phone away at nighttime mm -hmm. during the school year, whereas they don't at her house. You know, so she always does she does have certain things where like I'm more strict or they're more strict about something. Mm -hmm. And I mean we have differences. We do. We don't oh, agree yeah. on everything. So And that's okay. Like both of those things are not wrong and it's okay for it to be different. Mm -hmm. yeah and honestly it's like a Lydia learns from that like yeah she needs to learn Brianna's views and our views and then she can kind of make her own and I feel like we're we're pretty good at letting her like form her own opinions right. yep. on things yep I think that's how Brianna and I met was us having a disagreement <laughs> I think so <laughs> I mean, but it was a respectful disagreement exactly so, and it was nice yeah. Uh -huh. Well, it's, uh, I, we know we're never going to agree on certain things. Like we, we've had a few scuffles about certain things, but and then, sometimes we just have to set it aside though. We're like, right. we don't yeah. agree. We can talk about this later right. possibly, but like, or does it matter? Does it matter if we agree? That's another thing. It's okay to not agree on everything. <laughs> well, and to have Justin who's so laid back on everything and he doesn't like to ruffle feathers. So he, in those moments, he won't tell you, well, maybe he tells you how he feels about it, but he won't tell me actually how he feels about it. He just knows he doesn't want to fight with me. So then it's. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's so funny. Cause like last weekend we had plans and he dropped Lydia off at your house. And I was like, we have plans. He's like, well, I didn't want to fight. I was like, what, was it going to be a fight? Or did you honestly just like not have the conversation? I don't know. Like. I just dropped her off that she wanted to go to her mom so it's fine and I was like well I made a point oh and then he God. went with it so that he didn't like argue with me and I was so if Robin and I had out of the conversation <laughs> I think she probably would have been with you because <laughs> it would have been, been but there's been times where we're like I forgot like when I forgot Justin's birthday and oh, she's yeah. like well it would be nice for him to have his child and I'm like I forgot I will take her to you right now <laughs> she's like I'll deliver yeah. her right now like I'm coming I'm in the car I'm like no 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 no, no. it's it's all good it's fine it's his 35th birthday he doesn't care like, halfway to 70 no. yeah right <laughs> he's like I'd rather not have cake and ice cream but yeah he won't won't fight with me 
he he just he will he just put this tail between he'll his roll legs over and... yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> which is nice but also at the same time frustrating because you don't know what he well, actually feels yeah. <laughs> yeah i'm like you're an idiot yeah <laughs> just say what you want <laughs> yeah. i was like you knew we had plans oh yeah i guess i did know i was like <laughs> did you share that did you hear that yeah did you tell her we had plans <laughs> well no uh, okay. <laughs> It'll be fine then. That's how it goes. Yeah. That's funny. Um, my I'm glad. So my ex-husband and I recently in the last year have like mended a lot of things. And we are now, I wouldn't call us friends, but like friendsly. <laughs> <laughs> and to the point where we would be able to go to a wedding together and both be there and not he talks way too much though I would not want to stand next to him but <laughs> <laughs> but we could be at like if Liam ever did get married we could be at the wedding together and like it wouldn't be this huge fight his dad's side of the family on the other hand I don't know about but um, his mom's side of the family and I have gotten along the whole time like she actually was talking to me and we were friends when she wasn't talking to him <laughs> so um and she's always come and like visited logan um so he's in a residential like home uh, where he's just the only resident with two staff and she'll fly up there and visit him and she's she's grandma and i wanted her to always be in his life and even though his like my ex hasn't seen him in gosh eight years nine years now but his mom comes and sees um our son so it's it's definitely an interesting situation, but <laughs> I feel like everybody sets like 18 as like the, you only have to deal with each other till she's 18. And I'm like, you don't think she's going to have things after right. that? Like right. wait, lots of more things. Me, yeah. You're not going to catch me missing her college graduation or her wedding. Having I a baby or everything. grandkids birthday parties. And <laughs> yeah, oh, we do all of that together now. Mm hmm. Like, it was so exhausting to be like, oh, well, Lydia has to go with Brianna so that she can have her birthday party, and then we'll get her birthday party next weekend, but then she's over her birthday party for next weekend, because she already had one, mm -hmm. and it was like, you don't want to miss that. Let's just do it together. So I, I feel like even your brother probably thought it was weird at first, yeah. that first birthday party mm -hmm. where he was like, uh. This is awkward. Yeah. Yeah, but. But. It, everybody's used fine. to it now. Everybody's used to it. Yeah. I was like, hey, mm -hmm. and they just walk in, and it's normal i so would have so wanted that as a kid having both of my parents there would have been so nice Ugh. robin can't relate because her parents have been married the whole time <laughs> which is so interesting as far as like getting married because justin has parents who are divorced and i'm like i have a mom and a dad and a brother and we lived in the whole house the same house my whole oh, 18 yeah. years growing up i still go home to the same house with my same parents with the same decorations <laughs> like it's just so different to even work through that in like your marriage. Yeah. I, I literally cannot fathom that kind of stability. I was, um, I'm friends with my ex mother-in-law and I was at her house the other day and was just thinking about the fact that she's lived in that house with it basically laid out mostly the same the entire time that like I've known her since I was 18 or something. And um, I've just never, even growing up, I never lived anywhere like long enough or, you know, there's, it's, it's so fascinating to me because I can't imagine like what, how would I feel on the inside if I had to experience this kind of like stability? I literally don't look for it. I don't expect it. Um, yeah. It's fascinating. We have, we have the same thing. Like we go to my grandparents for Christmas and stuff like that. And my grandparents have been married. 55 years and they've lived in the same house for all 55 years <laughs> and like my mom can be like this is where my bedroom was and like everything's the same and for me it's so like nostalgic to go to grandma and grandpa's and Justin like kind of doesn't understand it because he didn't yeah. have that specific experience growing up but I was like that's what I want for my kids yeah I mean I think that's what everybody wants for their kids and like it just doesn't work all the time which is fine yeah. but like I don't know it's just interesting it is yeah yeah I'm really glad that my son gets a taste of that through through um his, you know my ex's family and the fact that they have like this 
this family structure and that stability, you know, I think that he kind of got a taste of like my more like wandering lifestyle and bouncing around and stuff. And then also gets to see, you know, like his grandparents were together until his grandpa died and, you know, they got together when they were really young and had a good relationship. And so, you know, I'm glad for that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm in the weird phase of we finally were stable and now I want to travel with them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So our bus is now being like restructured um, for more comfort after we lived in it for almost a year. Yep. Uh, so, cause now we know what we wanted to change. So we took the walls out and we're like re putting the walls in where we want them now. <laughs> But um, we have a home base, we have a home, but we want to be able to travel and see the, the U.S. and be able to do the things most people can't anymore because the cost of traveling. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Your kids will learn so much from that, too. Like, you can just expose them to so many more things traveling. Yeah. We went to like, 10 states. Mm-hmm. So what we do it. A- she goes with her grandpa every summer and like my family I go and we don't necessarily go all the time but she gets to and that's she's good like a sponge that gets those things mm-hmm. cool yeah. I hope that they all remember it <laughs> I yeah they do yeah. they will no. they don't remember going to Disneyland so <laughs> I'm like that was expensive remember <laughs> Lydia better remember Disneyland. Yeah, right. <laughs> She's gone to Florida now. Twice. She's yep. planning her third trip to go dance at the Relia Quest Bowl. Exciting. Yeah. yeah. So she does all the things. She know. doesn't. Uh, she doesn't miss out. No. She's not neglected. Promise. No, no, I can <laughs> tell that. <laughs> Oh, I love that. Uh, let me see if I had any other questions we didn't go over. One of the things that I think is really interesting for us is like, Lydia doesn't call me mom, really. But it wasn't that she wasn't allowed to call me mom. Right. Like, she'll call me mom now because her brothers will call me Robin. And she's like, you can't call your mom that. Mm-hmm. So she'll yell at the boys about it. But I don't know. Same with like, my parents, she doesn't always call grandma and grandpa, but like if she's trying to get something out of it, she usually she does. does. <laughs> grandma calls but... them by their first name, but I think it's just because that's how she was introduced as mm-hmm. that. And then she did come home and say, Robin and I had a conversation about calling her mom. And I said, Okay. She's like, Well, can I call her mom? And I said, Yeah. She's like, But I have a mom. And I'm like, Yeah, you that doesn't take anything away from me for mm-hmm. you to call her mom. Um, right. So she does every once in a while, but it, I yeah. think it helped having other siblings. Yeah. 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 I remember when my, my little sister, she's a half sister with my stepmom started calling my stepmom, Sandy, because my brother and I, Oh yeah. <laughs> and she got so mad and I'm like, well, well you don't want us to call you mom. So <laughs> what <do> we <laughs> right? I also remember being really mad at my stepmom and teaching my little sister some cuss words. <laughs> She's 10 years younger than me. So Perfect I think I was like, yeah. yeah, I think I was like 12 or 13. <laughs> Sounds like something Lydia would do. Yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah. Like, say the F word. Come on, say it. <laughs> but don't tell her that I taught you. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't even care if she did. That's I was good. very angsty at that. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> That's funny. Um, my little brother, I think, had a harder time with it than I did. Um, like he really wanted my stepmom to like him, and it never. Like, I think she was more distant from him than me, and she really didn't like me because I looked a lot like my mom. And then her daughter looked a lot like me. And she, I was like, see, it's my dad I look like, not my <laughs> Yep. We have the opposite where my boys just want Brianna to really love them. They're good <laughs> like, for me. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Drops them off and I was like, they're naughty today. Best of luck. And Brianna's like, no, they're perfect. <laughs> well, do you <laughs> understand me? Yes. <laughs> 
Um, you understand me? <laughs> as long as you know. That's so and funny. She, Lydia does get called Junior. She has been called Justin Junior, and I'm pretty sure she's been called Brianna Junior at your house. So we get it. Mm-hmm. Or like, I'm like, you really look like your dad right now, and I just need you to walk away. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we've been very lucky though with Lydia because she doesn't try to manipulate households. She did That's in good. The in the beginning, yeah. I and remember... I'm like, well, let me just call Rob- Robin up and we'll we'll square this away. And then you can tell she, she was like, lying. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But I remember there was one time where she was. I was like, Lydia, what, what do you want for supper? And she was a chicken nuggets and French fries kid. She's like, well, I want chicken. And I was like, okay, cool. And I made chicken for her. And then she was pissed. She didn't want chicken. So like supper's ready and she's like, I'm not eating that. And she forced herself to throw up on my kitchen table. And I was like, <laughs> so I literally like locked myself in the bathroom, called my mom and I was like, mom, I don't think I can do it with this kid. She's like, just chill, like hang out in the bathroom, then go back out there. But she's like, you call Brianna and you tell her what she did. So I did. I called Brianna. I was like, I will deliver her tonight, but <laughs> she's not going home with you because she thinks she's getting out of eating this chicken she asked me for. And Sabrina's like, yep, you just let me know when you're coming home and it's all good. And so like from the very beginning, we've told Lydia, we're the same team. Like mm-hmm. we're going to get raise something you. taken away at dad's house. You get it taken away at mom's house too. Yes. We don't, it's across the board. Yeah. She's like, we're this, we're the same team. We're just raising you to not be an asshole. Yep. We've literally always told her that you just have to be a good person. It's yep. not that hard. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It's that's all I want for you. If you don't get perfect grades, if you don't like do everything exactly right, all I want is for you to be a good person, treat people the way they that you would want to be treated, and and just be a productive member of society absolutely <laughs> yeah yep. Yep. Oh, as I deal with my 14 year old in court <laughs> I'm currently dealing with my son's dis- disillusionment in in the uh, education system uh, directly related to the degree he got and the fact that uh, the he he works in like doing archaeology like um, looking at like historical sites and stuff and there's like there's just no morals in that anyone who really loves archaeology ends up like giving up and doing something else because um the corporatization has just ruined that industry and he's just basically like gutted you can just see like that you know where he's gonna have to find like his new his new thing his new focus and joy like and it's I can't do anything except like be there to like listen and stuff but you know so what you were saying earlier about how it never really, it never really ends, you know, that like, it's true. Like you just stay there. Yeah, he hit 18 and you gave up on it. Yeah, you're on right. your own. Yeah. <laughs> See you at Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> They're going to live next door to each other now. Yeah. <laughs> yep. It's awesome. I'm driving over there later today. I, I picked up a, like a pre-made meal at Costco so we can like throw that in the oven and have dinner and. I'm going to work on my, my RV a little bit. It's yeah. um, exciting. We're it's... big on dinners. We have dinners all the mm-hmm. time together. What, two weeks ago we had a grill out? Yeah. Yeah. Saw the yeah. kids on playing, existing yep. together. Mm-hmm. Yep. If only someone yeah, would but... come and sit in my bed and have dinner with me. <laughs> I would I would totally do it if you're if you're close enough. I just need to like come and park my RV in your driveway and then like <laughs> Perfect. you know mine's parked in there too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I you probably saw Brianna that I got news that I have bilateral tears in my hips. Yep. And on top of not being able to eat. <laughs> um oh, I have right? yeah, two different tears on both sides. And so I have to have surgery on both hips. And they said I shouldn't be going up and down stairs for about nine months after surgery. You live upstairs. <laughs> I live on the fourth floor of my house. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. So I'm going to move my room, I think, down to the floor below me because there's there's no bathroom on my floor. So uh, and I already got a kidney infection from not wanting to go up and down the stairs. So. <laughs> um so I'm probably going to move down to that floor so that I have a bathroom and I'll like move all my mini kitchen stuff down there so I don't have to leave the floor 
Good idea. Oh my Good gosh. idea. That's that's basically what I did when I I had hip surgery for a similar kind of thing. And um, the weird thing about it is that was at the height of my gastroparesis issues. So like same like wasn't able to eat and then I went and got surgery and and I just took all my stuff downstairs and just lived downstairs until I was able to do the stairs again slept on my mattress on the floor and sadly my main floor doesn't have a full bathroom so I can't do it down there it only has a toilet so all the other well the second floor has two bathrooms and the basement has a bathroom but the main floor and my floor don't (laughs) so yeah that was true at my house too. It was just a toilet and a sink. There was that's why I got the the shower, the bathing wipes, is so that I could just like you know. <laughs> yeah. Robin, you know I live in a haunted house, right? Yeah. Do you know which one was her house? Yeah. Have you seen it? Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> it was I was telling my husband, I was like, you know where she lives, right? And he's like, I've always wanted to go in that house. Same. I was like, on the bus. We used to drive by your house on the bus when I was a kid and I just <laughs> house <laughs> well come have a tea party with me before my yeah. hip surgery so i can go to the main floor <laughs> there we go <laughs> we can have tea with boris yeah there we go <laughs> awesome well do you have anything else you want to say while we have you on is there anything else you want to know yeah uh, you answered all my questions on here <laughs> Um, I guess one that I would want to ask, because I think people will want to know, is if they are in a situation that they want to change and they want to make it better and start those conversations with their ex or their ex's new partner, how would you recommend them first starting to engage in that conversation? Well, so our conversation when we decided to make the switch was in person but I feel like sometimes it's like less intimidating to like just text them and and do that but Mm -hmm. also I find that our conversations a lot of the time like we're working all the time and running Mm -hmm. children so like texting is easier but there are times when I'm like I have to call Brianna because I don't know the tone of voice in which she said this right like is she mad at me or is she just quick typing while she has 10 seconds to do so type of thing and so I I don't know as intimidating as as it is I feel like if you can have that conversation in person with them and just say hey what can I do to make this easier because for us it was communication it was Mm -hmm. the scheduling and the getting her where she needed to go type of thing but there might be something else that's not working in your co-parenting relationship that's making it to be toxic honestly yeah and there was a lot of like understanding too of this is my schedule and it's not as lenient as yours somebody is going to be doing more work than somebody else Mm -hmm. and that was like understood I think also we had a conversation at one point and you straight out told me I'm not trying to take your spot and I think hearing that as a biological mom was big even though I already knew that about her but like her actually saying it yeah. of I don't want to step on your toes I just want to coexist with you in raising this child was big yeah. uh, mentally I think too and and saying out loud I just want to be on your team mm-hmm. like I just want what's best for this kid and I want to do whatever I can to assist in that I guess and always keep it positive mm-hmm. definitely do you it's have good. Def- yeah. <laughs> Once it goes negative, it's hard to get back to that positivity. Um, do you, what would you say if someone's ex didn't have a new partner and they wanted to start that conversation? I know this isn't your situation, but if you have any insight on if they don't have a partner, how they can set up that relationship post breakup, post divorce to be positive and move in that direction for the kid. Um, there's a lot of, um, forgiving for things that they might not be sorry about is a big one. Cause you really do have to, um, get yourself there mentally, know that that relationship is over, it's sailed, but you still have to be positive and move in a positive direction. And if you're always hanging on to past hurt, that's been in that relationship, you know, it's never going to go positive. So it, like you that. do have to do a lot of like self-reflection in that too. 
mm-hmm. and like separating your feelings from what is best for your child. That's huge. That's yeah. Huge. Like I can be hurt, but I still need to do what's best for, I mean, you did it with Lydia. Yeah. You mm-hmm. said, I have to separate. I'm still angry, but I need to do what's best for Lydia because this isn't working. Right. I saw yeah. some videos on TikTok, I think like yesterday of somebody complaining about their ex and like not having enough time with their child. And I feel like, and I had a conversation with them because I knew them um, in virtual life, but I was like, Hey, I bet your ex feels the exact same way you do. And if you were to talk and say, Hey, I know neither of us have enough time with our child because neither of us are there hundred percent of the time. What can we do to kind of make it more cohesive for our time with the child so we feel more included or involved even if we're not there and they ended up asking their ex if they could like have a FaceTime at night before they go to bed and read a bedtime story or something like that just to kind of include it and the ex was all about it like can I do that too (laughs) and I'm like you just need to communicate it and then you can both get that out and both feel a little better because it's about the kid that's always always been our thing you can call your mom whenever you want like my phone you know how to get into it you know how to call your mom like just grab it and do it if you want to do it that and because it was she's a daddy's girl I made it so that if Justin needed to come over and tuck her into bed on a night that she's in my home he absolutely can do so Mm -hmm. my door is always open if she needs you over in her area in my home always welcome to come over and be that you know because it's not my time yeah not his time yeah yeah and like Lydia's kind of a people pleaser just like her father Uh, it's bad so she won't tell us sometimes like I really want to go to mom's house or I really want to stay here another night or whatever um so sometimes it's like hey Lydia doesn't know what she wants to do do you want to go for supper like we'll meet you at El Rancho at six Oh, that's, my that's my favorite that's my favorite they just know they're like oh you haven't came in with Brianna in a while and I was like yes we do have lives outside <laughs> of each other sometimes <laughs> by the end of it it's who do you want to go home with and then she'll be upfront about it yeah yeah that's that's or, nice and then I might be like actually <laughs> I think I mind. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> she's a preteen that's how it goes. She is, yes. they don't even know what they want <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what I want most of the time so but it's so much easier now that she has a phone because she'll just like I mean it's easier it's and easier and harder at the same right? time like we're yeah. learning Lydia's not a good communicator so she'll be like Robin can I come to your house tonight yeah no problem mom Robin said I'm going to her house tonight yeah. and I'm like that whoa happened, like two like, weeks ago yes. I was like no no no, no. because Brianna texted me it sounds like you guys decided that and I was like no we didn't decide I thing like I'm just at work like responding to her I don't know what's happening I'm in trouble I didn't do it like (laughs) but learning like to also communicate on top of Lydia communicating is we have to follow up yeah yeah Yeah. I learned that with all the kids (laughs) yeah well because she'll make up something well Robin wanted me to help her with something I'm okay but did you ask me first if we had anything going on before not that just in case just a overall hey did we have any yeah (laughs) she doesn't though she She just like picks where she wants to be and then she's gonna like she makes it happen yeah yeah yeah. that's definitely (laughs) a impulsive age (laughs) 100 percent. so like why while it's nice that she can just call her mom when she misses her mom it's also like she's just making plans and like hoping the rest of us follow up with that <laughs> or just okay with it we like yeah. just will all together agree that that's what Lydia's going to do yeah <laughs> you're <laughs> the boss now <laughs> sounds like it's gonna get fun in the next few years right <laughs> and I think it's because we've given her that freedom of where yeah. do you want to be because we're flexible and but and because we've done that she doesn't manipulate us against each other usually she just <laughs> doesn't communicate the whole truths all yeah. the time yeah. drives me crazy oh yeah. that's cute <laughs> i mean they're small problems yeah yeah but um yeah it goes mine, pretty- yeah mine do that enough with their friends let alone like <laughs> oh, it's okay. not yeah it's not the other parent because we're in different states but 
Yeah. Um, the younger two, like I have 100% custody of them. And, but now it's the same thing with friends. So it's like, <laughs> just an age thing yeah. then. Uh-huh. Yep. Yeah. The, I think it started probably around nine is when like that behavior kind of started with all of them yep. <laughs> and then never stopped. No. Great. Yeah. <laughs> Looking forward to yeah. that. Teenage year. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> The fourteen year old needs to just hurry up. <laughs> Man, that was a rough feel that we'll be there too. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's like oh. the only point in time where I was like, I love my son, but not really liking him right now. <laughs> you know, it just it was about like a two year thing where I was just like found him very tiresome. <laughs> and they learn the language that like hurts you. And so like he loves using the word abusive lately. And I'm like, I'm so glad you don't know what that means because (laughs) like he flat out in front of who was it? It was a social worker said, yeah, I called you abusive because you make me go and get your cell phone charger like two floors down. And I'm like, that's not abusive. (laughs) And he's like, yeah, and you're sarcastic. And I'm like, that's not abuse. (laughs) If that's how you're being abused, you poor thing. Yeah. 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 The horror, what? horrible. <laughs> and then he's like, "Oh, she my took mom. away my phone," and I'm like, "Yeah, because you weren't you you're not using it right." <laughs> I know my mom said she's like, "There were some years that I definitely gave you the finger behind your back," and I was like, well, "Fair <laughs> enough." <laughs> yeah. <had> yeah. <laughs> Pretty sure I've done that a couple times. Um, yeah. <laughs> my mom's favorite is to sit there and be like, "Hmm, that looks familiar." Yeah, and I just have to <laughs> and laugh. <laughs> My my husband says the same thing. He's like, I love watching you argue with Lydia. It's cathartic because you're literally arguing with yourself. And I'm like, I don't like it. I don't like it. That's why it's so hard. <laughs> yeah. Justin and Lydia will both look at me and they have like the same facial expression. And I was like, I want to slap both of you. Like, yeah. stop. <laughs> you're the worst. Yeah. They're like this little gang that just team up on me all the time. <laughs> Yeah. we're having a great time yeah we're <laughs> not uh, thriving but we're getting there yeah you have to laugh about the hard times too so and it's yeah. okay to still have challenges and hard times and it doesn't have to be perfect and I think that's what I'm trying to teach the kids now because they feel like they have to be perfect all the time or else the second I mention anything bad all the good stuff goes away and I'm like, this isn't the time for me to congratulate you on all the good things right now. Like, we're going to talk about these bad things. It doesn't make that go away. But... <laughs> yeah, there's no there's no growth or progression or forward momentum without like making mistakes without the bad things. Basically, it's like there's a for there's there's a level of bonding that you have when you navigate an argument with somebody or have a misunderstanding, you know, and can communicate through it. So, yeah, I. I tried really hard to raise my son to not see like the the negatives as an actual negative, but literally just a thing to like deal with and respond to and, and work through. I think that because I took things so literally growing up that anytime someone mentioned anything negative or that I could do differently, it was, I'm not doing anything right. And I think that's how the kids are now too, but um trying to figure it out but I realized that a lot of the things that I was taking seriously from people telling me that I was doing things wrong was things that I was doing differently from how they would want me to do I'm not necessarily wrong and going through a lot of my therapy and stuff and learning that with the kids too and trying to figure out what they are doing differently that isn't necessarily wrong or doing wrong (laughs) so yeah um and that's sometimes there's a fine line between the two (laughs) absolutely well and that's the good thing about our dynamic too is I can be so dead set in my way of thinking on something or my opinion on something and both Justin and Robin can be like okay but what if we look at it like this Mm -hmm. and then it's like okay well that also makes perfectly good sense (laughs) and then we can meet in the middle usually on those Mm -hmm. things because I'm very opinionated and I'm very this is how I want it and why I want it and then they're like okay but maybe (laughs) there's a different way to do that that makes more sense and then and I'm completely open to it there have only been like a very few things where I'm like nope but normally we're 
we can usually find some common ground. We can find common ground, yes. (laughs) Yeah, and it's okay to have those things that you don't want to budge on too and respecting them for each other and realizing, okay, they do bend to a lot of things and this must be really important to that person is is pretty big. Um, let me see. I think I think that was all my questions. So we went over communication. That's the moral of the story. And pick your back. Mm-hmm. I back. feel like in a lot of my communities, that's like the number one thing, like the polyamory community and parenting and <laughs> and just having friends. It's right. communication. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And figuring out how the other person communicates and receives communication, because sometimes you can talk at somebody and they heard zero words you said, and they needed yeah. a different way. And so coming to somebody where they're at um, with their love languages, with their way of communicating, with their way of learning and and making it important. Yeah. And learning, learning, because like, don't rely on assumptions because what something means to me may not mean the same to you and so like clarifying having a clarifying conversation after making a statement can like help bridge that and then eventually you kind of build build a shared language through through that and you know it's it's such a bummer that we live in a culture where communication especially direct clear communication is not the norm and is seen it actually makes people uncomfortable um because we would just have a lot less drama like if people just kind of said what they meant and what they intended you know and back to the beginning of what you said lee in the very beginning of our conversation is setting the ego aside and actually hearing what the other person is saying instead of already having a mindset of their intentions yeah because it's usually not malicious what they're coming to you with yeah I feel like I overanalyze myself sometimes and I'm like, I don't want to be annoying, but I feel like I have to text Brianna again. But if I can say like, this is what I'm thinking and this is why I'm thinking it because I have this going on that like, and like, if everybody's just on the same page, she's like, oh, she can't do this because she works till this time. And like figuring it out that way Mm -hmm. is so helpful. Like Brianna doesn't need my life story most of the time, but if I can explain like, this is why I'm feeling like this might work better. It just gets everybody on the same page. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't sound so much like you're just saying, I want it this way because I want it this way. It's here's what's going on. And this is why I need this. Mm -hmm. I I think that is important. Um, It's, and if, you feel like you need that as well for yourself when communicating. That is important. I know with Lee and I, communication is huge and both of us are direct and also accept what each other says really well. And I think that's how we ended up becoming friends. (laughs) Yeah. And I'm very much like, I do like to explain myself. So I will use a lot of words to get the point across, but it's because I want the other person to be able to see the person behind the words and um and because I can be so direct I think I learned that as a defense mechanism to explain myself because if I just say the exact thing I'm thinking it can be very abrasive to a person that uh you know communicates in the average way of communicating um that being the tism but (laughs) um so I do, I do try to do that. And I like it when other people do that as well, because it helps everything make more sense for me. Mm-hmm. Yep. Agreed. All right. Do we want to do a random fact about ourselves before we sign off? <laughs> as long as I don't go first. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I can go first, but I don't know what I'm going to say yet. <laughs> I don't know. It just popped in my head. Um, let's see. I can do a tongue trick. <laughs> what does that mean? Oh, that's oh, weird. That is pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, there's mine. <laughs> it showed it on, on the video. little. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it showed it showed it on the little screen, so it'll be hard to now that you're um highlight. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that exciting. <laughs> you have to have something <laughs> weird. That's a random fact. 
I'm trying to think of a fact for you. I don't even think of a fact for myself. I was thinking of one for you. <laughs> okay, why don't you do that? Do one about each other. Yeah, you're you're going back to school. You're going to be a doula or midwife mm-hmm. assistant. There you go. Ooh, awesome. That's exciting. I'm also going back to school. She is. Yeah. Not a good time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going back for special ed. Awesome. Oh, that's awesome. I love that for both of you. Where are we? Well, we... We communicated that before we all decided because obviously in our co-parenting relationship we're gonna have to be f- like very flexible yes. so we before we did all of this we communicated it wasn't like a i need to have to your school. yeah it wasn't it was like a, i'm gonna need your support on this you're yes. gonna need my support on this this is something very important you know do we think we can do this is yes. one of the things you said yeah yes um, you can <laughs> A lot yeah. of kids, a lot of school, but we'll do it. We'll yeah. do it. Okay, yeah. great. Yeah. And the other thing was like, is it going to better our future? Right. Mm-hmm. I'm like, it is. Yeah. It absolutely is. Yeah. So, like I said, when you said, "Can we do this?" I was like, I feel like we have to do this because we have to make our lives better for our kids. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Like when we first started co-parenting, we were all dirt poor. Like, <laughs> it's so true. Literally, like. <laughs> I hope you like ramen noodles because yeah. that's what we afford. Yeah. Yeah. And so we just have to keep striving for better. And we were like, that's what we got to do then. It's so mm-hmm. cool to see our lives almost 10 years later than it was in the very yeah. beginning. So, yeah. Aww. All right, Lee. <laughs> um, <laughs> random fact. Just like, there's like, I'm like, this one maybe or that one maybe or like, I don't, you know. Um, Because it was like each each of you made me think of like different things, and of course, like my brain goes to like an associated thing. Um, Okay, I'll do like a really weird one. Um, I have like extra bony growth inside my mouth here, and I don't know if you can see it. Uh huh. Uh, Oh my gosh! Yeah, I see it. And um, it's most mine are really small, so every time I go to the dentist, they're like, "Oh, you have I don't remember what it's called, but they're like." But they're really small, which is weird because normally the whole bottom will like grow. And then if you need to get like a bone graft or whatever, they can just take it from there. Um, or yeah, I think yeah. it's a bone graft. Yeah. But um, it's it's very odd. It's the only time it bothers me is when they do the x-rays because it fills in that spot. So it pushes mm-hmm. right against it. And I'm like, ow. But <laughs> and it looks weird. So yeah. That is cool. That is cool. That is cool. <laughs> I like your weird body. <laughs> <laughs> my li- my lemon law body. <laughs> oh gosh, we just need to throw in the whole person. <laughs> right. Back into the mix. <laughs> Except for my brain. I like my brain a lot. I like my brain, but I don't like my feelings. <laughs> fair. I got That's a lot fair. of them. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> that. Oh gosh. That's funny. All right. Well, I will do my sign off very um, awkwardly, like I always do, especially (laughs) since I can't get to the button to stop the recording either. Oh, wait, I could move that. I don't even know where the record button went. Oh, there it is. Okay. I found it, guys. (laughs) (laughs) She found the button. All right. So this has been another Frightening Frowin with Lee and Tyler. And our beautiful guests. And join us next time on Two Crows Podcast. Woo!